climate change. Let me guess. You've heard about it before. You saw the headlines, the newscasts. Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. You saw the pop stars turn into activists on social media. We cannot let this happen on our watch. You watched all the documentaries on Netflix. You saw glaciers melting, the forests burning. You even heard politicians in your own country finally talk about it. There is no planet B. International werden wir unsere Mittel für den weltweiten Klimaschutz. And that, my friend, is precisely the issue. We just talk about it. We gather up in squares, hundreds of political leaders meet at conferences, but nothing game-changing ever seems to get done. And this is what this video is about. Doing something. So let me start from the top. This man's name is Marco Cappato. He's an activist and politician from Italy who has spent the last 20 years advocating for human rights and civil liberties, drugs regulation, right to die, AI for citizens, and last but not least, climate change. He, along with 5,000 economists and 27 Nobel laureates before him, has had a pretty neat idea on how to try to save our planet. The idea is to make CO2 emissions less convenient, so to shift taxes from labor to CO2 emissions. And this is how it practically works. By putting a price on carbon, we're all confronted with the environmental impact of our actions and incentivized to control our carbon output. This is no different from what we do with many things already. Think about cigarettes, for example. We know they are bad for the health of smokers and those around them, so we raise their price to disincentivize their use. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Carbon pricing means that a lot of the products we all use on a daily basis might increase in price. And as consumers, why would we want that? Well, here's why. Aside from preserving the stability of the only planet we're forced to live on for any of the foreseeable future, I see you, Elon, we can also benefit from this financially. Think about this. Government revenue comes from taxes. Income tax, payroll tax, corporate tax, and so forth. If a larger portion of this revenue is provided by the companies and people who most contribute to carbon emissions, then a smaller portion will have to be financed by your work, hence your taxable income. In other words, some things might begin costing a little more, but that won't matter if you get taxed significantly less because of it. Now, we think this might be a very good way of slowing global warming down. But in order for the EU to take this proposal into consideration, we need your help. How? Through an ECI. ECI stands for European Citizens' Initiative. It's a democratic instrument that allows EU citizens to shape the Europe they want, suggesting concrete legal changes to be discussed by the Union. It's much more than a regular petition, and if we can get it to 1 million signatures by July, the EU will be legally obligated to take our proposal into consideration and discuss it. So here's a little thought experiment for you. If there was something we all could have done six months ago to avoid what coronavirus caused worldwide, would you have done it? Would you have done something for your future to preserve the liberties you had? The coronavirus took our liberty away, and hopefully only for a little longer. But something less sudden like climate change has all the chances of doing the same. If you believe this is something we should at least try to do, then go to stopglobalwarming.eu to read and sign the ECI, and please get your friends to do the same. And if you have any questions or doubts about the proposal, comment them below. We promise to respond to everyone with detailed answers. There's an old saying that goes like this. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. The planet has been sending us plenty of warnings, and this is our opportunity to change future history, and hopefully into a much better looking one.